I've got some good news and some bad news. You see, everyone is a leader. But you might say, I don't know where I want to go. Well, we should figure that out. Welcome to Nobody's Fault Podcast. My name is Cash, and we are going to look at Luke chapter 19 today. Are you ready? Fasten your seatbelts. The Bible has so many exciting stories if you really sit down and think about them. And we're going to look at some of them today. Did I say my name's Cash and this is Nobody's Fault Podcast? I don't remember. But anyway, that's what we're doing here. He entered Jericho and was passing through. And behold, there was a man named Zacchaeus. He was a chief tax collector and was rich. And he was seeking to see who Jesus was. But on account of the crowd, he could not, because he was small in stature. So he ran on ahead and climbed up into a sycamore tree to see him, for he was about to pass that way. And when Jesus came to the place, he looked up and said to him, Zacchaeus, hurry and come down, for I must stay at your house today. So he hurried and came down and received him joyfully. And when they saw it, they all grumbled. He has gone in to be the guest of the man who is a sinner. And Zacchaeus stood and said to the Lord, Behold, Lord, the half of my goods that I have I give to the poor. And if I have defrauded anyone of anything, I restore it fourfold. And Jesus said to him, Today salvation has come into this house, since he also is the son of Abraham. For the Son of Man came to seek and save the lost. As they heard these things, he proceeded to tell a, t a parable. Because he was near Jerusalem, and because they supposed that the kingdom of God was to appear immediately. He said, therefore, a nobleman went into a far country to receive for himself a kingdom, and then return. Calling ten of his servants, he gave them ten minas, and said to them, engage in business until I come. But his citizens hated him, and sent a delegation after him, saying, We do not want this man to reign over us. Then he returned, having received the kingdom. He ordered these servants, to whom he had given the money, to be called to him, that he might know what they had gained by doing business. The first came before him, saying, Lord, your mina has made ten minas more. And he said to him, well done, good servant, because you have been faithful and very little, you shall have authority over ten cities. And the second came, saying, Lord, your mina has made five minas. And he said to him, And you to be over five cities. Then another came, saying, Lord, here is your mina, for I kept laid away in a handkerchief, for I was afraid of you, because you are a severe man. You take what you did not deposit and reap what you did not sow. He said to him, I will condemn you with your very own words, you wicked servant. For you knew that I was a severe man, taking what I did not deposit and reaping what I did not sow. Why then did you not put the money in the bank? And at my coming I might have collected it with interest. And he said to those who stood by, Take the mina from him and give it to the one who has the ten minas. And they said to him, Lord, he has ten minas. And I tell you that to everyone who has, more will be given. But from the one who has not, even what he has will be taken away. But as for these enemies of mine, who did not want me to reign over them, bring them here and slaughter them before me. And when he had said these things, he went on ahead, going up to Jerusalem. When he drew near to Bethphage and Bethany at the mount that is called Olivet, he sent two of his disciples, saying, Go into the village in front of you, where on entering you will find a colt tied, on which no one has ever sat. Untie it and bring it here. If anyone asks you, Why are you untying it? You shall say this, The Lord has need of it. So those who were sent went away and found it just as he had told them. And as they were untying the colt, its owner said to them, Why are you untying the colt? They said, The Lord has need of it. And they brought it to Jesus. 
And throwing their cloaks on the colt, they set Jesus on it. And as he rode along, they spread their cloaks on the road. As he was drawing near, already on the way down the Mount of Olives, the whole multitude of his disciples began to rejoice and praise God with a loud voice for all the mighty works that they had seen, saying, Blessed is the King who comes in the name of the Lord. Peace in heaven and glory in the highest. And some of the Pharisees in the crowd said to him, Teacher, rebuke your disciples. He answered, I tell you, if these were silent, the very stones would cry out. And when he drew near and saw the city, he wept over it, saying, What that you, even you, had known on this day, the things that make for peace. But now they are hidden from your eyes, for the days will come upon you when your enemies will set up a barricade around you, surround you, and hem you in on every side and tear you down to the ground, you and all your children within you. And they would not leave one stone upon another in you, because you did not know the time of your visitation. And he entered the temple and began to drive out those who sold, saying to them, It is written, My house shall be a house of prayer, but you have made it a den of robbers. And he was teaching daily in the temple, the chief priests and the scribes and the principal men of the people were seeking to destroy him, but they did not find anything they could do, for all of the people were hanging on his words. There was a lot of people following Jesus. He was leading them. He was trying to get them to get to know God. You know, we are all leaders in some way or another. By default, we may not think we're leaders. We may not want to be a leader. But if there are people in your life, which there probably are people in your life, you're leading them. Now, you're either leading them to a better place, a worse place, or no place. We're leaders by default. We don't get out of this. So we should try to become a good leader, right? So that parable of the uh, landlord that went away and the servants either invested the, the money wisely or they squandered it. The ones who didn't do well with the money, they were punished, right? He was speaking this to the rebellious people in this, in this crowd. He was at an area where he was preaching to the rich people, the tax collectors, the leaders of the church when he said this. So he, he was telling them, you're not leading people the right way. Uh, so years ago, I met a guy who played Moses in an old movie. You've probably seen it. Um, Charlton Heston. I got to meet him. He, he played Moses in the movie The Ten Commandments. So I had him autograph an old VHS tape. That's kind of cool. <coughs> Excuse me. But Moses had the job of leading people out into the desert so they could meet God and pray. That's what God wanted him to go out and meet God. Moses had that job. Lead him out. We're going to talk. I'm going to talk with the people. And then we're going to go on a two-week hike to the promised land. But that two-week hike turned into kind of a Gilligan's Island style of journey. It took him 40 years to go a two-week journey. It wasn't that Moses was a bad leader. He was a good leader. He had some people who didn't want to follow him. He took over a million people and led them through the desert. They wanted to go back for the good food of Egypt. They'd rather be slaves. Rather be slaves for the veggies and the bread of Egypt. So, to be a good leader, I kind of wonder if it doesn't help to be a good follower for a while, to kind of learn what it's like to be 
following a good leader, right? Moses, to prepare to be a good leader, went and spent 40 years in the desert on his own, tending sheep. He was a shepherd of sheep before he was a shepherd of people. Um, to be a good leader, we should each learn how to follow the voice of the Holy Spirit. That, when we're following the Holy Spirit's voice, that is how we bring glory to God. Because we're, He lets us bring out the best of us. And then we can lead the people around us and lead ourselves to a better future too. So you could be such a bad example that people are like, oh man, I don't want to be like that guy. That's the kind of leader you don't want to be. And some of these stories in here, we're talking about what are you following? Are you following a fake religion? Are you following yourself? Because you're going to get lost. Jesus is trying to get people to follow him to a better place, to an eternal place. Uh, oh, I just had a thought in my mind. Well, maybe it wasn't that important. Anyway, uh, this will be a shorter one. And again, I want to say, I'm having people tell me that they subscribe to the channel and then they get deleted right away. So keep checking your subscription. Make sure you're subscribed. I hope you're subscribed. And uh, uh, anyway, do, do all the things they do on YouTube. And if you're on the uh, audio platforms, I would love a review. You could be the first one to give me a review. That'd be great. That helps. That helps spread things. I feel like there's something important I was supposed to tell you today. Maybe I'll think of it tomorrow. See you tomorrow.